So what do you do if there's no sun? I rely completely on this solar to send electricity to my cabin. I run my refrigerator, my TV, lights, a fan, and even medical equipment at night. So what about cloudy days then? How do we get power on cloudy days to keep our normal lives going? I'm about to show you how to size your solar system so you'll have virtually no interruptions. I went with 12 310 watt solar panels. The system here is considered a 3.8 kilowatt system, system or somewhere around 3800 watts. I want to show you the batteries that I just recently installed and I want you to see how much power they actually use every day. These are the two server rack batteries by Vature. These are what they call 48 volt batteries, but they have a normal voltage of 51.2 volts. Right now it's 10 o'clock in the morning and the batteries are at 91%. When I got up this morning before the sun even came out, the batteries were at 85%. When the sun went down last night, I did take notice that the batteries were fully charged at 100%. Last night I used several lights, the TV, the refrigerator that's always going, and even a CPAP that I sleep with to help me from snoring at night. So in my case here, it appears that I'm only using about 15% of the batteries every night. That means that the panels only have 15% to charge up in the mornings. This can actually usually be done before 10 a.m. I really like having my batteries fully charged early in the morning after using them all night. That gives me the rest of the day just to run off of the solar panels and the batteries just stay and float. At only pulling 15% out of these batteries per night, that gives me somewhere around six or six and a half days of power without any sun at all. Now it's starting to get cold out and it's that time of the year where the sun's not going to be shining as good as it would during the summer. As a matter of fact in the winter the sun seems to go more south and the days seem to get shorter. Even on the cloudy days I'm still pulling in three or four hundred watts. The highest wattage I've actually seen these panels produce is right around 2900 watts. I want to show you the importance of the degree angle of your solar panels. If I would have known a little more about this whenever I installed my panels, they would be at a different angle than they are now. Where we're at here in Oklahoma, the panels should be somewhere right around 30 degrees. I have this little tester here that will actually give me the degrees of my solar panels. That's pretty sad, but it's right at 8.6. I'm going to unbolt one of these panels here and show you the degrees where it should be. This is actually our 30 degrees of where it should be. But in my case, it's been okay because I have more power than I need. On those cloudy days, I could be getting five or 600 watts if they were angled correctly. So let's put all this power into perspective. Let's talk about it in a way that everyone can understand. In my cabin, I have an AC window unit, which is about 6,000 BTUs. The cabin's really small, so it does very well cool in the house in the middle of the summer. But can this system run that air conditioner 24 seven? Well, the answer to that, just from my experience, is yes. But now we've upgraded to these lithium batteries, and the lithium batteries, we're able to run them down all the way to zero before we have to shut them off. Before with the lead acid batteries, if we could only run them down to right around 50% discharge, you wouldn't want them to go any lower than that if you wanted them to last any time at all. So with the lithium batteries, we actually have twice the power that's available now. So my panels were 3800 watts, but the highest wattage I seen was 2900. So what will 2900 watts run in the middle of the day when the sun's out and everything's perfect? I'm telling you, it has enough power that it could run about five of those window units at once. Now, as soon as the sun went down, it would not be able to sustain it for very long. But that gives you an idea of what kind of power that the solar panels are actually pushing. So again, now what about the batteries? What kind of power do they have and what will they push? These batteries are considered to be five kilowatt batteries. So we have a total of 10 kilowatts here. I'm just going to make this easy for you. And I'm going to tell you that these two batteries here will run the AC in the house for about 20 hours straight. That's running strictly off the batteries without being charged at all. Now most of the time you only have about a 12 or 13 hour period where you don't have light. So if we left the air conditioner and the refrigerator running all night long and just some of the other normal things, we're probably going to be somewhere around the low 30% when we wake up. Are we going to have enough power throughout the day to be able to charge the batteries back to 100%? Well, in my case, yes. And that's what I mean about sizing your system correctly. It's better to have more than you need than not enough when you need it. By the way, solar panels have become really cheap now. I can actually leave links in the description of the video that will give you access to some of the cheapest panels you can find. If you're interested in building a system like this of the same size, I can also leave the links to the other equipment in the description. I really love my EG4 equipment and I'm really excited about my Vature batteries, but we're still in the testing stages of it. But so far, so good. And those batteries are pretty cheap. So I guess the moral of my story here is that in the winter time, I can probably go five or six days without any sun at all. 
So I want to show you what my third and final backup plan is when there's no sun. This is a very cheap $400 and very quiet inverter generator. If I was ever to get desperate, I could hook my inverter generator into the inverter. The EG4 inverter is also a battery charger. So I've wired this to it to be able to charge the batteries through the inverter. So no sun, no problem. That generator is very efficient and only uses about a gallon of gas for 10 hours of use. If you got any questions, just throw them up in the comments. I'd be glad to answer them the best I can. You guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.